I remember when I got here, USF was kind of the underdog. And um, in some cases, people still see us as an underdog. And that's something that I think we love, we, we live for, because it gives us the opportunity to, to show the nation what we can do. From Tampa, when I was growing up, I actually remember vividly USF being ranked number two. And I was like, wow, right here in Tampa. This is a place you should want to be because we, we up and coming. Like, we building a program back up to like what it's supposed to be. I first started looking at it because Quinn Flowers played with my brother back at Jackson. And like when he came here, that's when I first like noticed like USF. I first started taking notice of USF when Quentin Flowers was here. And I heard of him because he was from Miami. His story was really inspiring. Ever since he started playing, I saw the program climbing. I just felt like me being with Coach Scrum, he got the people that surrounded around him. He's gonna help me develop um, into the man that I am. And now that I'm contributing to this team, it feels good for me. Touchdown, Randall St. Felix. South Florida on the board. Coming as a freshman to, to seeing how the campus has grown, you know, it's exciting to be a part of that. And just seeing that growth and seeing myself grow with the program and with the university, that's been something that's like, I've been blessed to be a part of and that I'm gonna be forever grateful for. I came here because coaches like showing me like they really wanted me here. They harp on brotherhood here, so I love it here. During my official visit, I felt like it was like a good place to call home. Brothers, always got jokes, laughing. It's that love that you have in that room that it makes you want to play for the guy, you know, outside of you or inside of you or across, you know, the formation from you. And, um, and even, you know, in the trenches or the running backs or the quarterback, we're always going to be excited. Running out there with my, my teammates and hearing the crowd and with the cheerleaders and all of them carrying the flags is just real fun. When they get pumped up, it gives me more juice, so I get pumped up too. Oh, I have to see my family all the time at the games. It's great seeing them after the games, just talking to them. My mom always tells me when I make a play, she's like, I'm surprised you don't hear me from the stands screaming your name. I'm always yelling your name, Kai Mikaz. I'm just always thinking when I make a play, I wonder if my mom's yelling right now. Just the, the impact you can have on you know, people outside of the program. It just makes it, you know, worth playing. My community support me back home, like, every time I score or something like that. Like, after the game, when I check my phone, my whole community tagging me and stuff like that. So it's a blessing to be a role model to the kids. Um, having the kids watch me back from my community, knowing that um, we can make it out of this community and there's more options out here in the world for us. It's something that, you know, we live for, coming out of the tunnel and you're seeing all the fans of Ray J. You see the fan support on social media. You see the fan support around the, the area. It feels good. It's everything I ever wished for when I, when I wanted to play college football. So my dream's coming true. It's USF. You live here. If we can keep all the great talent that's here, we wouldn't be touched. It's a great campus. It's a great program. It's a great area to, to come to. Um, and I just say, if, if you want to Live out your dreams. USF is a perfect place to live out your dreams. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Go Bulls. Where does strength come from? The Bulls knock off a Power 5 team. In your a bowl city? Game for the second your home? Or is it where you are going? And this is going for a touchdown, six for the ball. All the work and effort that brought you here to the moments that define you. Strength isn't about what you can do. It's about what can be accomplished as a team. A family pushing each other toward greatness to define their own legacy for a new era on the Bay. This is Bulls country. Bull strong inside USF football. Two clap to the rim, clap, two clap to the rim, clap. Bull strong inside USF football is presented by Coca-Cola. Hooters. Tampa General Hospital, USF Health, Florida Lottery, 
Wendy's. Wendy's is a proud partner of USF Athletics. And when the Bulls play, you win. Get a free small fry after each Bulls football game and score a free small frosty when they win. Valid for 24 hours after any game day at participating Tampa area Wendy's locations. No purchase necessary. This segment of Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Tampa General Hospital. Jordan Cronkrite became the fifth USF player in program history to rush for 1,000 yards in a season. The Bulls have had a 1,000-yard rusher in each of the past five seasons, the longest streak in team history. First run of the game belongs to Jordan Cronkrite. The transfer from Florida picks up 14. His first carry is a bull. Top and throw! Cronkrite! 30! 20, 10, and that's the way it is. Touchdown, USF. This is my second year here at the school. My first year playing football for the team. It's, it's been a blast. Uh, no complaints for me. Uh, last year was tough for me. Um, I wasn't playing last year. I was just watching my fellow teammates out there. But this year, I'm able to go out there and, and help um, the best way possible I can. Run it to Cronkite. He breaks through, and he's into the secondary. Jordan Cronkite has one man to beat. He cuts it back. Against Temple, Jordan Cronkite led USF's ground attack with 17 carries for 83 yards and two touchdowns. Cronkite passed the 1,000-yard mark with a 49-yard run on the Bulls' opening possession. Everybody wants to have good stats and stuff like that. Um, but I just want to win. Um, that's really what I'm focused on. Um, I don't really have any, like, like records I'm trying to break or anything like that. It just comes with when we're playing and stuff like that. And once again, Cronkite breaks free and scores a touchdown on fourth and one 30 yard score. No one's irreplaceable. And I think that's when you look at that running back room. We got a lot of super talented backs that know if they don't bring their A game, that there's another player in that room that's just as talented that'll take that spot. And as a coach, you love to have that kind of environment and atmosphere. Yeah, I'm getting a lot of the a lot of the carries at the time, but I just know that if maybe things aren't going well for me, then somebody else can step in and I don't have to do everything myself and it's a great feeling because they know they can go out there themselves. Everybody in the room can go out there and, and go ball out themselves and knowing that you have them behind you and you have their their support all the time. The one thing you love about them is they do all the things that you want a running back to do, pass pro, run, you know, not only running the ball, but they've been, they're gonna be physical in the pass game. They're gonna go give great effort and go get downfield, and that's something, you know, that those guys bring every single day, and they've got a great energy about them, and, and they help push the O-line every single day. They know what it takes to do that, and um, you just love the type of physicality and the explosiveness that they can bring. Explosive, versatile, and an excellent teammate. His combination of work ethic and downhill running ability has established him as one of the AAC's most dangerous running backs. Hailing from Miami, Florida, Jordan Cronkite proves you don't have to go far from home to run with the South Bulls. Florida, South Florida, go. This segment of Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Wendy's. The South Florida Bulls had birds on their minds as they traveled to Lincoln Financial Field in Philadelphia. It was the week before Thanksgiving. They were playing in the home of the Super Bowl champion Eagles, and most important, were playing the Owls of Temple. 
and USF was hoping to get some air under their own wings again after their first three-game losing streak in years. They were primed for the important American Athletic Conference game that could be oversimplified as a battle of the Bulls' explosive offense against the Owls' stingy defense. Beautiful football day, 45 degrees, sunshine perfect. From the shotgun on second down, it's back to Armstead as he tries to stretch it out. He's going to lose three yards in the play, and the Bulls up front, led by Khalid McGee that time, the weak side linebacker, makes the tackle. And it's punt time for Temple, three and out on the first series of the game. Yeah, nice job by the USF defense. Ditto for the Bulls offense, not unusual for a group that had averaged 475 yards a game for the season. A group that also had starting quarterback Blake Barnett back under center after missing a game with a shoulder injury. Third down and two on the ground. It goes to Crockwright. He's got the first and more. Jordan Crockwright down the sideline. USF and he is run out of bounds inside the five. Almost had a touchdown and the Bulls are in business. Now Crockwright again to the right of Barnett. Here we go, Barnett. Flips it out, Cronkright, he's got it, touchdown. It was the start of a big day for Cronkright, who would become just the fifth Bulls back in history to go over 1,000 rushing yards in a season. The 7-0 lead lending promise to the afternoon, warming the faithful who made the trip. And for a second straight series, the USF defense would step up and hold the Owls to a three and out. Dangerous pass to the outside, and it got broken up by Mazzy Wilkins. Now you talk about jumping around, Wilkins jumped that one right there. Quarterback pressure has been key for the Bulls defense all season. They're in the top 20 in the country in tackles for loss. Slumps it up in the end zone. It is deflected and knocked down by Mike Hampton. Whether rushing the quarterback or the kicker, the aggressive Bulls were pitching a first half shutout. And special teams weren't left out either, as the Bulls had a nose for the ball regardless of which unit was on the field. USF had like five white jerseys. They've got it. They've recovered it. Chris Barr alertly fell on the muffed punt, and the Bulls were in business with Johnny Ford getting them into Kobe Weiss range. 35-yard attempt, and it is through. So 10-0, USF here. Rosso. Pressure, oh, he's gonna be sacked. Kirk Livingstone for USF on his fourth sack of the season. Temple had scored 99 points in their previous two games, but the Bulls silenced the home crowd by shutting them down even when they resorted to trickery. And they are going to fake it, here we go. Throw the pass, Sateo is incomplete. Almost intercepted by Mike Hampton. The Bulls were doing everything they needed to in a road game. Sound defense, opportunistic offense, and a time-consuming drive midway through the quarter that chewed up 83 yards. And it is Bell. Shifty as well. And spinning his way up to midfield. And that's going to be another first down. Now they'll rush for Barnett. There's an outside line, and a catch is made by McCants. Over the top. Laid it in there perfectly, and it's a first down for USF. Now it's back to Ford, and out in front blocking is Barnett. Barnett leading the way, and Ford gets down to the two. Jordan Crockwright has it for USF. Crockwright's second touchdown sent USF into halftime with a 17-0 lead. But this game would definitely turn into a tale of two halves. While the Bulls' strong defensive play continued, Temple managed their only offensive touchdown of the day on their first drive of the second half. And on the return is Bentley Sanders for USF. Gets a hole, cuts it back, far side of the field. And Sanders still on his feet. Redshirt freshman Bentley Sanders leads the Bulls in kick return yardage and immediately got a big chunk of real estate back. Will be knocked out at the 47-yard line. But the Bulls could not take advantage of the good field position. Second to 13 pass from Barnett. Look out, and it is intercepted. Delvon Randall from the shotgun on a first and 10 from the 33. 
Sudden change, taking a shot, deep down the field, that's intercepted. They're going to give it right back. Ronnie Hoggins on the interception for the Bulls. And Hoggins is still on his feet. He's got a chance inside the 25. Multiple flags come in. It was the eighth interception of Hoggins' career. He had a strong game with seven tackles, upping his season total to a career high. His play and the rest of the defense helped protect the 17-10 lead heading into the fourth quarter. But Temple would score touchdowns on special teams and defense to come from behind for the win. Coach Charlie Strong pointed to not scoring on the two turnovers they created. His Bulls know they have no time to dwell on the loss and have to return home to get ready for the war on I-4. Bull Strong Inside USF Football is presented by Coca-Cola, Hooters, Tampa General Hospital, USF Health, Florida Lottery, Wendy's. Wendy's is a proud partner of USF Athletics. And when the Bulls play, you win. Get a free small fry after each Bulls football game and score a free small frosty when they win. Valid for 24 hours after any game day at participating Tampa area Wendy's locations. No purchase necessary. The Bull Strong Inside USF Football Postgame Report is brought to you by USF Health. You know, a tough loss, guys, a really hard loss. You go up 17 points, then you get the ball there to open and drive, and we had three opportunities on our side of the 50. We turn the ball over twice, and then we give up the ball on a uh, four downs. And then you have a lead, you have a chance to add to it, and then you allow them to stay in the game, and then they made some plays. It's one of those games where you, it's almost like you just, we gave it away. But, you know, you got to give credit to Temple for his continuing a battle. But we had our opportunities, we didn't take advantage of them. Third down and two on the ground. It goes to Cronkwright. He's got the first and more. Jordan Cronkwright down the sideline. Cronkwright. What an addition to this group for USF. The transfer out of Florida, number two, Jordan Cronkright, the guy that's now over 1,000 yards rushing this season. It's a big accomplishment for me, something I've never done. A lot of my role models, um, they've done it numerous times, and it's a great feeling for that, but um, like I said, it's bittersweet right now. Yeah, nice job by the USF defense. Well, we wanted to uh, stop them. I think we held them under 100 yards rushing, and uh, we were able to run the ball, but still, though, uh, when we needed to make plays, they uh, had it, uh, converted a couple of third down plays on us that were, were really key. And the Bulls up front, led by Khalid McGee that time, the weak side linebacker, makes the tackle. Start the run. That was the game plan. Seniors stepped up today, this week. You know, we, we said enough is enough. Uh, just our attention to detail, um, I know we missed a lot of tackles in the second half, so I think tackling was a big um, focus that we needed to focus, focus on in the second half was tackling. Dangerous pass to the outside, and it got broken up by Mazzy Wilkins. That's what we had to um, think we had to finish. Uh, we was up 17-0. We just had to finish. We were selling uh, a two-high look all game, and Coach BJ switched it up, and we went one high and uh, kind of went in the middle of the field, uh, went off the quarterback, and uh, threw it up and caught it. It's intercepted. They're going to give it right back. Ronnie Hoggins on the interception for the Bulls. I mean, anytime you lose, it's, it's disheartening. But I mean, uh, as a team, we got to stick together, man. We got we got another game next week. We got to move on. We we lost this one and it hurts, but it's on to the next one. We have a uh, against our rival from the team out east, so we got to move on and get on to the next one. 
kind of take it as a lesson. We still have one more game left. Uh, so, you know, we got to do everything we can to prepare for next week. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's seeing night, you know, the last game at home, Ray J, you know, so I'm very excited for that. It's a, it's a rivalry game, so yeah, I'm excited.